Hey, it's Joseph here. Is this really noticeable? I've got a little weird eye, um, but it should be okay. Hopefully it's not bothering you. I just had this idea of doing an experimentation and wanted to show you the process of doing that. So after the intro, it will be my screen. First, I'm gonna open up one of my SketchUp file. Okay, so the model is loaded and I'm gonna start my Enscape. And once that model is loaded, I can just dock that onto one side as well as the SketchUp, just so that you know what is going on. When you enable the synchronized view function, the Enscape will match your SketchUp view. And depending on what sort of quality that you put in, this may cause your computer to kind of stutter, just like what you're seeing here. So let me just double check on my settings. So my rendering quality is set at high, which should be okay. However, if you check automatic resolution, it should kind of help that out as well. So I can just kind of orbit and you can see the changes immediately there. And one of the benefit of using this feature is whatever the animation that you have within SketchUp, it will respect on the Enscape side as well. So if I go to scene one, it'll flip. However, if I go to window, model info, and animation, and I have enabled the scene transitions, and I can increase this number to perhaps three seconds. And if I go to scene one to scene two, it will kind of animate as well as on the Enscape side. So I can just flip onto different scenes, and basically Enscape has this feature of respecting what is going on on SketchUp side. So you can see that animation there which is very useful seeing the model that is already set up on SketchUp side. So this is when I thought there are a few extensions on SketchUp that kind of animates the process. And the two extensions that I can think of are Clothworks and the Soap Bubble. So why don't I try a few things with those extensions and see the results when those are mixed with Enscape with these live animation kind of feature. So let me check if I actually have the Soap Bubble. Soap, Soap and I don't see any. So what I will do is go to window, extension warehouse, and then search soap here. So correction, soap, skin, and bubble will be the official name of this extension. And you can go and click that. And then this should be really install. Um, I think it's showing as a download because I'm not signed in. So let me sign in first. And after the sign in, it will just say install. You just click on that and it's going to ask you this question. Yes. Okay. So now the extension should be loaded. Actually, it came up on my other screen, which is right here. So let me just close that and that tool should be ready there. So with this one, I can just kind of clip that away there so I can see more on the screen. So first of all, go into this roof and hide these as well as these stuff here and then perhaps these lights as well. And before I hide it, just so that they're not all loose, I can just group them and then hide. So I'm using several short keys here and I'll try to show it at the bottom of the screen, at least one so that you are aware of what's going on. However, I'm not doing some sort of black magic here. So just follow me along. If you have any questions, please leave it in a comment and I'll try to answer that. So back on my screen again, if I come here and if I hide rest of the model so I can clearly see the roof. And first of all, I'm just gonna draw a rectangle there and then delete the face so that I only have these lines here which I'm gonna get the bubble from. So let's just throw in a bit more complicated shape because I think the rectangle is just too easy. So let me just cut there and then also maybe throw a curve on this side here and then triple click this and make it into a group so that I can isolate just them alone. And what I'm interested in is skinning this area here. And perhaps I can even move this up. So click on that point and drag it up there. And maybe this point here as well. So move it up so that the curve is actually coming up like so, which will be 
kind of weird and I can just kind of fill in the rest of the space by doing so. But I'm trying to make a trickier surface for SketchUp to stitch on, which is this loop here. So I'm just going to select those edges and then click on generate soap skin and I can increase the division which is 10 right now but to 15, 1, 5, enter and then hit enter again to generate the surface and it's just going to stick a sort of a skin on top of the surface here and you can see that it's now got some sort of skin on top. Now the interesting thing about this soap bubble is that you can actually blow it up and it kind of animates that for you as you just saw when I was skinning this. It's very interesting. Actually, let me go ahead and hide these columns and this sort of installation here because it is sort of confusing. So let me just back out a little bit and hide that as well as these columns. I believe I can select them and then hide like so and perhaps flip this so that it's not so confusing. So select them and reverse faces so it's all white. And this is a surface which I can select and then I can click on this button here. It's gonna ask me for pressure. So input pressure plus minus pressure. If I type in five, enter. And what it will do is it will just kind of blow that area up. And then it is also doing it here. It's kind of hard to see. So let me just kind of orbit around. And now that has blown up like that. Maybe I can reduce the value to maybe uh, two, which then it will decrease. And you can see that's animated on Enscape, which is kind of cool. It always was possible on SketchUp side, but you can also see that on Enscape side. So maybe do it to 20 which is probably too much, but for the sake of having fun, let's do that. And you can see it just kind of really blows up there. Um, if I don't hide rest of the model on SketchUp side, you'll see more of the model and what's happened. So that's how I created that weird looking dome on SketchUp side and animate that onto Enscape side, which is kind of cool. And the next one is Clothworks. Pull different model here. So I have this model loaded here, which is sort of a statue or sculpture of a human figure, but I want to lay this statue down. So let me just use a rotate tool and then just lay it down like so so that this sculpture is sort of floating in midair and turn on Enscape. So same sort of business. Let me just dock that there as well as SketchUp on the left side so you can see what's going on. And in this case, I think the background would be better if it was some sort of sky or complete white background. So go to atmosphere and change it to clear and maybe white background. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And same thing, synchronize the views and this person will be just sort of floating midair, which is what you're seeing on SketchUp side. Now this time I'm gonna pull out a different extension which is called Clothworks. So you can install Clothworks by going to SketchUcation store, but I'll leave the link in the description so you guys can go and download that. It is free and it offers some sort of trial as well for additional features. However, for this purpose, you can use it as a free basis. And because I already have done that, I can just go here and check on Clothworks and I'll have this toolbar once I enable that. And for me to use this, what I can do is draw a rectangle on this model here. Let me just reverse it. So I have some sort of surface which I can play with and I can just make this into a group and right click and find Clothworks and make cloth. So this is gonna serve as white fabric or cloth on top of this statue so i say on top so i'm gonna have to move it on to top of this thing so that my statue is actually below so once i do that i have to make sure also this statue is an object that is recognizable so right click this and make into a collider which that cloth will collide with and behave in different ways now i can just press on this toggle play button and license is not activated that's fine okay and then you'll see how it drops and then not really behave like a cloth and that is because i have not made it correct so i can just right click this and then go here and go to undrape it causes to go back here and then change that to 
simple grid and perhaps throw in 200 okay yes and once that's finished view hidden geometry and once that is highlighted i can go back to view hidden geometry and then just play that button again and you'll see it drop and you see how it just wraps around that person and you should be able to see on Enscape side as well. Now I am actually puzzled why Enscape is still showing this plane. So let me just kind of back up and see if this needs a bit of nudging, copy, delete, paste in place. Let me see if that does anything different. There you go. So if I play this button, it will just kind of animate that on Enscape side as well. Let me just kind of back up and see this again. So different angle, let me just kind of get close, perhaps here and then drop. And you should be able to see that on Enscape side as well. So it kind of blinks and stuff, but I can still rotate and see this animation. So that was just the two experimentation that I've done using SketchUp extensions combined with Enscape trying to provide an animation together. And if you found another extension that does similar thing with the animation on Enscape, please let me know by leaving it in the comments. I'm happy to discuss all of that. So I hope this was interesting experiment for you. And if you like the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching this type of videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.